and welcome to another episode of the RTI Health Advanced Series on Social Determinants of Health. My name is Denise Clayton. I'm a health economist at R in RTI Health Advance, and I'm joined today by my colleague Lisa Lines, a senior health services researcher. Previously, we talked about challenges with social determinants of health data, RTI's local social inequity score, or LSI, and some key applications of the score. In today's episode, we'll be talking about some of the key findings from our analyses. So Lisa, the first question that comes to mind for me is, out of the 150 plus variables that go into the model that creates the local social inequity score, which ones rise to the top in terms of being strong predictors of life expectancy at birth? Yeah, well, first of all, um, we have to reiterate that our measures are very very diverse, a lot of different indicators that we've got in the models, and some of them may not necessarily be uh, traditional social determinants measures. Um, for example, the, the number one predictor um, across the US uh, in terms of life expectancy at birth is the number of nursing home residents per 100,000 residents. Um, and that's an indicator of a lot of different things that um, I think think get at social determinants. I mean, it's, it's about um, congregate housing. So that is certainly a social determinant. Also, it's a poverty measure. Um, and it's a measure of frailty and general sort of physical health. Um, people who are in nursing homes um, probably don't live as long as people who live in the communities and age in place. Uh, and having resources to pay for something like assisted living versus going to a nursing home um, is uh, another kind of um, indicator of life expectancy. Um, the second predictor that came up in terms of variable importance and, and reiterating again, these are uh, the numbers that we're getting out of the algorithm that tell us how much the error rate would go up or down depending on if we didn't know that information. So it's not like a beta coefficient that you can get out of this, um, an algorithmic indicator. So um, the number two uh, in terms of variable importance is uh, the percent of adults who said that they had mental health challenges in the previous month on at least 14 days uh, of the prior month. And mental health um, is, you know, we're seeing across the US uh, deaths of despair going up. Um, and uh, certainly during the pandemic, we've, we've seen a lot of problems with mental health. Uh, but even this is before the pandemic. Um, it's the second most important predictor uh, in terms of life expectancy is mental health. Um, third on the list is tooth loss prevalence, which I think is a very interesting measure. Yeah, that is interesting. What what are your thoughts around tooth loss and what's going on with that variable? So there's a lot in there. I mean, when you think about who uh, loses their teeth, you know, um, maybe there's something with diet there. Maybe there's some uh, soda drinking, candy eating. <laughs> um, maybe there's um, a, a real issue with lack of access to dental care. So um, if you're poor uh, and you have Medicaid or you don't have insurance uh, or you have Medicare, um, you actually don't have dental coverage most of the time if you're on traditional Medicare. Um, and so, you know, the only uh, dental care you can get is maybe in the emergency department and that's all they're going to do there is pull the tooth. So, uh, so there's a lot going in there. Uh, you know, there could be also something to do with drugs. Uh, drug use can influence tooth loss. Um, also, violence can indicate, can uh, definitely re result in tooth loss. Uh, there's also, you know, help-seeking behavior. So, um, if you think about, you know, people who never go to the doctor, never go to the dentist, um, you know, I think that that tooth loss prevalence is is where you end up with uh, a lot of times with um, delayed care, um, whether it's people just hating the dentist or not having access. Um, so. Uh, the other part of that is it's also, you know, once you've lost your two teeth, uh, uh, multiple teeth, um, it affects what kinds of jobs you can have potentially. Uh, maybe you can't get a service job. Um, it also can affect, uh, you know, what kinds of foods you can eat. Um, so there's a, there's a lot in tooth loss that um, is really important to life expectancy. I mean, 
tooth loss is associated with um, cardiac health as well. So um, it's a complex measure. Uh, it's a poverty measure. It's um, a health measure. Uh, and it's, it's a complex one. Any other variables that rose to the top as top predictors across states? Well, right. Um, so related to tooth loss is also smoking. <laughs> uh, smoking prevalence rate was the fourth, um, uh, in terms of variable importance, the fourth, mo fourth most important variable. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, smoking is an interesting one because that one, it seems more like there's a causal pathway. We know that smoking causes diseases that, you know, can, can cause to a shortened life expectancy. So, but that one sounds a little bit different from maybe, you know, the nursing home prevalence. So what kind of interpretation do you ascribe to the variable importance findings, knowing that the random forest model that is used to create the LSI is a predictive model and, and not a causal model? Exactly. And that's really, really important to keep in mind that while these are you know, interesting to look at. You you can't um, you know treat variable importance like a beta coefficient or whatever. It's it's not a causal model. It's a predictive model, um, and the, the the goal of the algorithm is to get to the best predictions. Um, so, I think what it lets us do is just kind of open up that black black box a little bit and look inside and see what's driving the algorithm. Um, and, you know, we can't necessarily say for sure whether addressing, um, you know, uh, uh, home and community based services instead of uh, nursing home um, kinds of uh, situations, whether that would, you know, um, whether that would actually uh, result in life expectancy increases, I, it's hard to say, um, but I think it allows us to get some understanding of what's driving uh, outcomes. Yeah, I think that's a great point because like the nursing home variable shows up as a strong predictor, you know, could be to an extent because some of the same underlying drivers affect nursing, nursing home status and life expectancy, but potentially there's in addition to that a causal pathway directly from nursing home status to life expectancy where there might be some benefit from programs that help people get the care they need in their own homes for longer. Um, and kind of along those lines, even though these variables are strong predictors of life, life expectancy, and, but they're not necessarily causal variables, um, is there something that we can do to identify the real drivers of health in order to help organizations that are making decisions about social determinants of health or other policy interventions? Absolutely. So um, one of the approaches that we've been looking at is actually using more causal modeling to understand uh, social determinants of life expectancy and other outcomes. Um, relying on random forest for that, it's, it's not a good idea. Um, <clears throat> you need to use different <clears throat> modeling approaches in order to understand the causal pathways and the causal mechanisms. So um, other regression approaches and other kinds of um, analytic um, approaches are much better suited for, for that. Um, Makes sense. And the, but it's nice that the random forest model and this variable importance kind of starts, starts us on a path about variables that we would want to explore more in that causal pathway. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for talking with me today. Um, it's not every day I get to remind people that correlation, or in this case, prediction, does not imply causation. But uh, even so, useful relationships can be identified with carefully designed analyses. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us for this discussion, and please stay tuned for more episodes in our Social Determinants of Health series. If you'd like to learn more, you can connect with us at rtihealthadvance.org. We're happy to talk with you further.